The Unfiltered Business Podcast, a place where young professionals come together to grow, evolve, and change for the better. A place where success is accessible. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. It's the uh, Business Unfiltered Podcast. We are on episode five. Uh, It is Wednesday, February 3rd. Uh, We made it to episode five again. And uh, man, it's a lot of stuff's been happening. It's been kind of crazy. Yeah, where do I even start? So it's, again, we're talking like it's, it's interesting when um, you're working through. So this, let me just give you a little insight into like our business quickly. February, March, or sorry, January and February historically have been kind of slower months for us. And one of the reasons why I created this podcast was because I, I knew that this time of year, I would have a little bit more time to um, put something like this together. Um, it's funny when you start doing more work, you start attracting other things, right? Because within two weeks, um, we got a couple people, a couple of listeners saying, hey, I heard what you're doing. I love what you're doing. Um, we'd like you to do this for us. We've had some new opportunities roll through our way. And now it's becoming this thing where it's like, as much as I love doing this podcast, it's like, I have to, I have to, um, to edge out, you know, three or four hours a week to kind of hammer out different. We've been putting out small little clips, you know, the recording, I am not a video editor. So this is not like a streamlined process for me. It's just one of those things I'm kind of, if you've watched the, the YouTube streams, um, you've probably seen that it's a little bit choppy here and there, but again, Hey, we're learning, we're figuring this shit out. It's a process. I'm enjoying it. I'm learning. I'm having fun with it. But um, my point was things are crazy right now. Um, we've had the, you know, the majority of our work, we have some startup clients, um, but the majority of our work is small business work. You know, Allison and I, Allison more than me, but Allison, my wife grew up in the restaurant industry locally. I mean, she's worked at multiple restaurants for, you know, 10 years at one, maybe 11, and then like eight or nine at another. And so she loves that industry. Um, I worked at a few others, but you know, the small business world is something that we were very passionate about. And especially during COVID, you know, we're always trying to help them and we've never had a shortage of opportunities with the small businesses. But what's been interesting is that lately more startups have been reaching out more established online e-commerce businesses have been reaching out. And, uh, there's something about what we're doing. That's, um, that's resonating with them. Um, I don't know. I think we may have touched on it in Allison's episode last week, but um, she's been having a lot of success on TikTok. And yeah, there's been like, she was telling me uh, the other day that um, for any of you who watch Vanderpump Rules, um, it's one of our guilty pleasures, I guess you'd call it. But um, one of her favorite characters started following her on TikTok, she found her, and uh, she's been like commenting on posts, and Allison's like fangirling. It's 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 cute, it's funny, but it's TikTok is a wild platform. And my point is, is that um, because we're putting in all this effort to to make more content, to to kind of you know get ourselves out there and and really like speak our truths, um, people are listening. And I never thought that we would get um, the kind of responses we've been getting. Um, especially this quickly, but you know, it's just been, it's been wild. It's been a wild month. We're in February already. I can't believe it. The stock market's crashing. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on. The fucking world is burning. I, it's, it's a crazy time. Um, but you know, we're making the most out of it and that's all we could, uh, that's all we could ever wish for. So this week's episode, um, we have Justin Schaefer. Um, he is the vice president of sales at Flexport. Um, this was a great episode. Um, I recorded it back in December with him. We go back a long ways. We go back a long ways, but um, he was a, a friend of mine that grew up playing sports. You know, you'll probably feel that theme kind of moving throughout uh, this podcast, but he's a guy that's just kind of climbed the ladder um, ever since he started working um, towards his career. And he was one that was fortunate enough to play baseball professionally. 
Um, his brother actually played for the Brewers and jumped around to a few different teams, but Chief was drafted out of UC Davis um, by the Mets, um, bounced around for three, four years, something like that. But um, just a really impressive guy. And we talk a lot about, um, let's see here, emotional intelligence. Um, you know, it's not always enough just to work hard. I mean, there's just, the, I, I can go into, you'll probably, you'll see a bunch of clips that of like little snippets from the show, but it was just, I, I it was a side of him that I had never seen. And uh, it was impressive. Let's just put it that way. Um, I think that you guys can get a lot from it. And um, I think it was the first podcast for me, at least, where I felt that there was some like actual flow through the episode. You know, I'll be completely honest with you guys. When the the first few episodes, even though I'm interviewing friends, I'm a nervous fucking wreck. You know, like I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to, what I don't want this to be is two people rambling for 30 minutes. I need there to be some sort of flow. I need there to be a start, middle and end, some sort of a wrap up. Like what the, why are we talking? What's the point of all this? And, um, for the first time I felt like, um, I was able to do it in a more natural manner. Um, you know, who knows how, if I keep doing this for a long time, I'll probably look back and go, man, these are terrible. But for me, you know, five episodes in, I felt like this one felt na- the most natural. And I look forward to kind of getting um, that flow into more um, of a natural feel from episode to episode. We're working on it, but this one felt good. Anyways, I'm, I'm at that point again where I start to ramble and that's when I know it's probably time to start the show. So um, thanks again for showing up. Uh, you guys are awesome. If there's people that you want me to speak to, um, send me a message, send, DM me. Uh, I'm always on LinkedIn. You guys will see these videos on LinkedIn. Um, you can email me, Derek at polygonmarket.com. Um, if you want to be a guest, shoot me a message. We can talk. I'm always looking for interesting people. Um, but anyways, we'll stop the rambling here. Um, we'll start the show. Justin Schaefer, here we go. Thanks, guys. All right. On today's show, we have Justin Schaefer, Vice President of Sales at Flexport, uh, an old friend of mine. We go back, shoot, 20 years, maybe more. Um, yeah. Thanks for coming on, Chief. Or sorry, Justin. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Does anybody call you Chief in the work world? A couple. Okay. Yeah, there's a couple. Okay. There's a couple like friends of friends that have found out, you know, through the grapevine yeah. and they come to work with a big smile on their face and, you know, call me chief. I think it's funny. <laughs> well, well, you'll be Justin today then. I don't know how that, that it doesn't feel natural, but uh, that's how we'll make it go <laughs> today. Um, so I wanted to bring you on today because there's this very interesting, the reason why we know each other so long is not only did we grow up in the same town, um, you know, we were athletes together. We played Little League, you know, pretty much since we were 10 years old, uh, through All-Stars, high school, summer ball, all that kind of stuff. And I'm finding this through line in business that a lot of the successful people that I know um, have this sports background. And I thought you'd be perfect to come on and talk about this because, you know, you were very successful in the sport. You wanted to be drafted by the Mets, played shortstop um, at Davis, you know, and then that kind of translated into the business world. So what I wanted to ask you today is you know, do you find that that background that you have helps you, um, in everyday world when it comes to business? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, without it's a very question. Broad question, but yeah, no, I, no, I, I think without question. And I think like, I mean, I could answer this so many different ways. Um, we got plenty of time, you know, I, I, <laughs> I think, I think all of your, your standard cookie cutter answers certainly, apply here, like teamwork, discipline, commitment, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the most kind of cookie cutter answer that I would probably want to expand on is is work ethic, right? I think from from a young age, we're all instructed that if you work hard, you can achieve whatever you want. And so if if you were to ask me about the ties between kind of my success in in baseball and business, and and by the way, you know, by by no means do I consider my sales career like some sort of roaring success yet, because I, I still consider 
uh, you know, my sales career is in its infancy compared sure. to, to baseball, right? I, I spent two decades <laughs> chasing baseball. I mean, your um, modestness also ties back into <laughs> to teamwork and sports and stuff like that too. So keep going though. Yeah, yeah but I, I think, well, I appreciate that. But I think between the two experiences so far, I, I think by far the strongest correlation uh, is the simple fact that that I've learned that it's just simply it's not enough to work hard, right? We're always told work hard, you can achieve what you want, but I, I've learned it's not enough to work hard, both in sports and in sales or your career or whatever you're going after. Mm-hmm. It's just not enough to work hard. Rather, it's how you work hard right. that can give you that edge and, and keep you advancing. And um, basically what I've learned along my journey in life in baseball and in sales is I think a strong work ethic is certainly a, a baseline requirement for any type of marginal success. But if you sure. want that, that next level of success, like if you want to be whatever your goals are, if you want to be top 10% of, of performance at work or, or whatever your ultimate goal is, then you've got to couple that strong work ethic with the right mindset and the right amount of emotional intelligence as well. Um, because I, I mean, think I, it's, it's yeah. that, yeah, I, I just think the mindset is what's going to allow you um, to be more targeted and be more relentless in, mm-hmm. in pursuing what you're working on, right? Totally. And I think you, you hit on a few different things that I want to touch on here. I mean, you talked about goals. The thing that I love about referring back to kind of our old sporting world is that there was always another goal in mind, whether it was, you know, when we were young, we want to make the all-star team or when we're on the all-star team, it wasn't about just like being there. It was about getting to that next regional champion, whatever it was yeah. And then high school. And it was like, Hey, we want scholarships. And then there was always that next thing to look forward to and having that insight into the business world of knowing like, okay, right now I'm a sales rep, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a sales rep. There's sales reps that do it for 30, 40 years, but like, there's so much more to what you can do. And there's this ability of being able to look forward and be like, what do I want out of all this? You know? And I think there's something that that correlates between the two that I find very powerful and what I want to do. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. I, and I, I think one of the things that trips, um, a lot of people up and I think I'm certainly guilty of it too, is like, we want everything now, of course, you know, like you set these goals and you want it now and you want that promotion within a year. And and Mm -hmm. sometimes it's not a reality. Um, but if you can really get your Mm -hmm. mind, go back to the mindset, like with goal setting, it's a great thing to touch on. Like if you can really start to get yourself to think about playing the long game, Mm -hmm. if you can start to think about like incrementally every single day, I can accomplish something that gets me closer to that, that goal. Um, I think that that's a certainly, um, you know, a, a very important part of, of reaching whatever goal you're looking for is having that right mindset and that, that totally. right, the willingness to take the, the long road to get there, you know? Well, the long game is really important too, because you'll notice along the way. And I've, I've had a few moments like this where like, you're wanting that big promotion, you wanting that raise, whatever it may be, and you work your ass off for it. And then you finally get it Yeah. and it feels great. And then you get that first paycheck and you're like, that's it, <laughs> you know, or like wh- whatever it is, it's not always exactly yeah. what we what we thought it was but yeah that keeps us pushing for the next step right maybe there will be a moment when it is exactly what we we're looking for and not being able to to kind of settle for what you got so that's yeah. and i and also i mean we're talking about sales because you're you know you're vp of sales um, i know you started in this route i know you talked about we talked about it a long time ago where you were doing like door-to-door sales a little bit right like kind of just that is not an easy job but the interesting yeah. part that i wanted to talk to you about is that like especially tying it back to baseball, you know, hall of famers fail seven out of 10 times. Right. (laughs) And being in sales, I mean, most conversion rates are not that far off from there. If you're really good, maybe you're doing 50%, something like that. But like, I think for me, that helps being okay with like failing and someone not liking me. I think it's part of it and something that everyone has to get used to. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. You want to, <laughs> you want to learn how to, how to fail well, play baseball or go door to door, uh, selling, right. you know, you, 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 you'll, you'll cut your teeth on, on failure all day long. Right. Um, did that, yeah. did that kind of side of it all, is that something that you fall back on when, you know, maybe, you, maybe you had a big meeting and it didn't go the way you wanted, um, being able to understand that like there's more fish in the sea, there's, there's more abundance of business everywhere. Like, are you able to fall back on those thoughts? Oh yeah. I mean, I look, it, it's so cheesy, but I have learned and tried like actively every day in my life, um, for the past few years to be more glass at full, mm. like fail every time I failed, like there's always been an opportunity to grow. 
Right. Um, you know, like going back to baseball, there was a, a particular uh, travel team that I wanted to get on and I got cut and I had never been cut once in my life for anything for baseball, but it goes back to what I said at the beginning. And I'm like, well, how the hell did I get cut? Like, I, like this was one of the, like what I said at the beginning, like how I learned like targeted work ethic and the emotional intelligence I was referencing. It's like, it's self-awareness. It's, it's objectivity. It's being vulnerable. It's being able to recognize that, Hey, you're not perfect. And there's areas to grow. Right. And I think throughout baseball and sales, like, if you're in sales, you're going to fail a lot. Right. And right. like through all of those of it. failures, it, it leads to iteration. It, it leads to growth. It leads to, to all these things. Yeah. Um, Without and, and that, so, yeah, why, why even try, you know, if like you're going to succeed every, every single time, it's going to get boring. You're not going to try very hard. Your presentations are going to suck, you know, you name it. So like, yeah. the failure is part of it. It makes you better. Yeah. 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 No, hundred percent. I mean, look, it, it really does represent growth. And like, I've had, I don't know, man. I I've had wonderful leaders and mentors in my life, and some welcome failure. Like it, mm -hmm. it's okay to fail as long as you learn and grow from it. Sure. And then there's some there's some that are a little bit more rough around the edges that, um, you know, failure is not an option. But I, I look when you're looking again back to the long game when you're playing the long game, failure is inevitable, right? Like well, you, it's that, almost that's not a, even failure. If you're thinking yeah. about it in that, in that mindset of being like, Hey, I'm going to learn something from it. Then like a failure isn't really a failure. It's just another opportunity to grow. And I think that's a super good way to put it is being like, Hey, instead of just being pissed and being like, well, I didn't, this guy didn't get me and they didn't, you know, making every excuse in the book it's being like, all right, well, maybe I didn't prepare the way I should have, or maybe I should have done something different. I'll keep that in mind for the next opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. So, hundred percent. Yeah. Having that, that self, you know, being able to look inward, I think is really, really powerful, especially nowadays where, like you said, everything is instant gratification. We want something bigger, better now. Right. So being able to understand like, Hey, you know, slow down a second. Let's play the long game. We're, we're in it for, this is a marathon. It's not a sprint. I think yeah. some, I forget one of my, uh, my old employers told me that because we always have the quota at the end of the year that we want to hit. And of course, yeah, we'll have a big month. And you can kind of like take your foot off the gas for a second. But the idea is like try and find a way where you can almost keep it in cruise control where it's like, it's never these like roller coaster peaks and valleys. It's like being able to ride that wave, but uh, there's, there's a million ways to do it. And I'm yeah. not talking about it, but I think that was really important for you to say. Yeah. What I, what I want to talk about next was, you know, a few years later you start at Flexport and uh, this is something that, you know, I was looking through my, my network for people to interview here and this memory of yours, you know, um, sparked something in me where I was like, I had to talk to chief because you were asked to move across the country to New York city, Manhattan, correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a big yep. scary city that everyone talks about and you were asked to basically start a sales branch, right? Yeah. I was asked to open our, our New York office. It was the first, uh, first satellite office outside of, uh, San Francisco for, for Flexport. So walk me through the process there. I mean, I want not necessarily like what you needed to do when you got there, but like when you were asked to do that, like what's going through your head? Yeah. I mean, let me, let me practice what I preach. You know, I talk about emotional intelligence and being vulnerable. I was scared. Right. I I, I, like, I, absolutely scared because like, you know, I, I'm not going to talk too much about Flexport, but we had grown so fast in San Francisco and been so, so wildly successful that, me having the opportunity to open New York was obviously outstanding, but there was an immense amount of pressure that went right. with that because, uh, you know, I didn't want to be the first one to fail. Like we, we were still small at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I, I was scared. I am 100% willing to admit that. Um, I think that and, only makes and, you stronger to be honest. Yeah, no, it does. But like the funny thing with fear, um, and like, I, as I've gotten older and I've just started to reflect on things and, and whatnot, like the funny thing with fear is like, for the most part, we're so like, we don't, we're afraid for no reason. Like they're like, okay, what's an example? So like th there's finite fear, right? So like if you're on death row, right, we're mm -hmm. getting morbid, but if you're on death row <laughs> and you, you have a date that you're going to die yeah, and you're actually afraid to die that fear is warranted That's and justified. Fear. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. But a lot of the fears that we have, like, am I going to make this travel team or am I going to get this promotion or I have this big internal interview coming up? 
Mm-hmm. We as humans are just so negative that we just start to think about, well, what if something goes wrong? Right. It's all what if I like fail? Right. Yeah. But look, what happens if you succeed as well? Right. Like that's and look, I'm not good at this. Even today, I'm not good at it. But the funny thing with fear, like we all know this, like fear, uh, you know, it, it brings about fight or flight. Right. Exactly. If you're scared of something, you're going to turn around or you're going to fight it. Right? right. And I think like when I went to Flexport, I was scared, man. Um, but I had an opportunity, right? I could, I, I could flight, which means right. I could say, you know, I'm going to stay here. I'm it's comfortable in the area. Right. My family's here or whatever. Mm-hmm. Or you say, okay, let, let's try to climb this mountain. And the way that I, I, you know, my fight in this scenario was preparation, right? Like it wasn't like, Hey, you know, Justin, here's the job, get on the flight tomorrow. Like I had mm-hmm. a few months. And so for me, it was like, well, how am I going to, you know, put this fear to bed or at least ease it? And that was just relentless preparation. I was going to say, that's the best way to kind of counteract those feelings is just like work through it. It's like, we can sit there and stay all night and, you know, have anxiety, whatever you want to call it. But the the best way to get through it is just fucking hit the ground running and start working. You know, we always hear about those people that are like, they'll go, they'll, they'll be on their deathbed in their seventies and they'll talk about this, like idea they had when they were young and they wish so badly that they followed it and all that kind of stuff and it's like that's the last thing i want you know it's having yeah. that kind of regret so yeah remember when, 100%. I, when i made the move to to start with with allison here at polygon i can't tell you how many people were not really like on board they were like well you got this great job like what do you mean you know you got benefits you got all this shit and it's like i do and that stuff will still be there but like yeah try this right and i think the same goes for for this opportunity that you had it's like i could i could submit myself to the fear and be like this could this could ruin my confidence forever or the flip side like what you said it's like or this could be the start of this amazing career that i could ride the wave of you know that's going to be kind of like my call sign for here on out so i love the way that you spun that i think it's really important i think like I, I've honestly, like, this is the toughest, I, I'm being honest, like this, you know, when you spend two decades chasing baseball and then you get into the workforce and I was what, four years behind my peers when I mm, got in, because yeah. all my, all my, all my resume said was I could hit a fastball. <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> translate to, to business very well. Right. So I had, a, I had a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety. Um, and I think like what I struggled with at the beginning of my career and what I'm much better with now um, is I think like society and people in society the people that like there's people that incite fear in you or make you question yourself that we allow ourselves to just like to to succumb to them right Mm -hmm. I, i remember like um when i came back from from baseball and my career was over and i was trying to figure out where i was gonna work and whatnot um and and the job you referenced cold calling came up and i was explaining to um, a, a buddy of mine um, in, in my personal life about the job, about cold calling and, and whatnot. And he made some comment. He was like, why are you going to do that? Like, you you can't sell anything. Like, you, you've just been an athlete your whole life. And I had never questioned my ability to, like, go from baseball to sports because I've always felt like I was capable enough as a human to, to find something if baseball didn't work out to, yeah. to, to work on and have fulfillment. And what he said just – it, it festered it's it, honestly like it rocked me for like six weeks i was like mm. holy shit, am i can i be great at anything but like, like am i always going to identify as an athlete and i just let someone's words get to me and what i've learned as i've got older to, to, to come full circle with like fear is that the people that are judging you or the people that are going to offer their opinion or whatever mm-hmm. they're the ones that are afraid to jump Oh, totally. They're they're the ones that are afraid to fail. They're the ones that are afraid to to take that leap. Um, and like, right, look where at, do you think like all I that said, judgment comes from? It's exactly, they've made those mistakes, or they can't realize them with realize that within themselves. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And like, you know, the saying like you can't teach experience. Like, it is so damn true. Because I wish I had, you know, my my thirty two years of life experience back when yeah. I was like fifteen years old. You mm-hmm. know, because there's so many things I was afraid of back then that I think I'd have a completely different mindset with today. You know? Totally. It's, it's interesting, Chief, because, you know, as friends and we've known each other a long time, it's like 
this is a different format, right? We aren't, we don't typically talk about these kind of things, but it's yeah. funny because, you know, from the outside, I think we all, especially since we're all athletes, we have this front that we put up. We're all close friends and it's not like we're being, yeah, for sure. like we are who we were 20 years ago in some, in some respect, but like I, I, a lot of that stuff that you said totally resonated with me because, you know, going back to our college days, we both had Tommy John surgery, right? Yep. Um, for those who don't know, it's like, you know, elbow surgery for pitchers and other, and other uh, baseball players. But um, what happened was you, yours was successful. You went on and you actually played five, six more years of baseball, something like that. Um, mm -hmm. For me, I was a little unlucky where it didn't work out. But what I, my point was is that when I blew it out the second time and I knew that my career was done, I was terrified because yeah. I was a student. You know, I wasn't someone who could be like, oh, well, I'll just fall back on my business degree. You know, like I didn't know what the fuck to do. And yeah. I found out later that my dad was worried about me. He's like, you've been a knucklehead in <laughs> your life. Like we thought you were just going to be a baseball player. Like what the fuck are you going to do? But the, yeah. the, my point is that like I found something in sales where I could bring it back to kind of this like scoreboard idea. Right. And there it's like I found a way to compete again because that's what yeah. I did. And that's yeah. why, you know, we all love golf and we all love these other sports, like being able to compete again. But I love all these things that you're saying because it, it really does touch with me. And I think a lot of other athletes feel the same way. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I agree. So, I mean, I'm trying to figure out how I want to sum this thing up because there's been so many good little nuggets here that we've been talking about. But like, I think when you talk about it's more than just work ethic, it's like working smart. I mean, is there anything that is, that's, that you've learned over the years that like you can kind of sum up how to effectively work smarter, not harder, something along those lines. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I really think, um, I, I, I really think your ability, um, to be self-aware and, and objective with yourself. Like I, I, I can't stress it enough. And like, this is something that's been a, a lifelong struggle for me. It's not like one day I was born and I was emotionally intelligent. Like there's several events, right, particularly exactly. on the baseball field. Yeah. Growing up where like, I, I really was not self-aware. I really thought I was better than I was, or I really thought I was invincible or whatever it is. And like, that, yeah. yeah. And like, if you want to be a top performer and, and, and whatever, and whatever you're chasing, like you just have to have that ability to recognize, like, like I said, work ethic, strong mm -hmm. work ethic. That's the baseline for marginal success. You work hard, you're going to be above average, right. but you want to get to that next step, right? Like you get promoted because you worked hard. Now you're in a, at a, a C uh, <laughs> with, with other account executives that also worked hard to get there. Right. So then how do you get to that next level? among this crowd of the above average people. And it's just that ability to recognize your weaknesses, to isolate them, work relentlessly on them, and then turn that weakness into a strength, yeah. right? And I think if you can do that, and this is what I'm very passionate about, both like as a baseball player and uh, with my sales career, mm -hmm. if you're always improving and you're always adding something to your skill set, it's impossible to become one dimensional. And if you're one dimensional, that's when you get passed up. Right. Right. And so like that, that's how I'd sum up um, the, the work ethic and the mindset and the emotional intelligence. It's just you have to be willing to admit where you suck. I'm at this. I'm either going to fix it because I know how myself or I'm going to reach out to Derek Thomas to help me fix it. Or I'm going to reach out to my dad or my manager or whatever it is. Um, and it's hard to be like that because we all want it to your point. Like we, what you said earlier res really resonated with me is we all kind of put up this front mm -hmm. that we're perfect or that we have our together or whatever i think and it's just not true. forced to do that unfortunately like especially i agree you know, i love i mean this is the perfect way to end the episode it's like understand what you suck at and try and get yeah better. you know i yeah. can't think of better advice because yeah I mean, i'm thinking of 10 things that i suck at right now <laughs> get better at it but that was great chief i really appreciate the time thank you for coming on this was huge anything else you want to talk about before we finish up here no, man, this is awesome. Thanks for, for thinking of me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely.